We're also getting word today that President Obama is planning a big public push to build support for his deficit reduction plan, which includes tax increases and some spending cuts. He'll meet with labor leaders tomorrow and will travel outside of Washington to solidify backing for his proposal. The president's senior strategist, David Axelrod, and South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham discussed the plan on CBS's Face the Nation. It is obvious that we can't resolve uh, the challenge here uh, simply by cutting uh, the budget. We've cut by a trillion one. There are more cuts to be made, but you need new revenues. And everyone who, every objective person who's looked at this uh, agrees on that. So the question is, where is that revenue going to come from? No Republican will vote for higher tax rates. We will generate revenue from eliminating deductions and loopholes, but we will insist our Democratic friends reform entitlements, something we've never done, and that's where the big money's at. Doug Schoen is a former advisor to President Bill Clinton and co-host Campaign Insiders. He's also a Fox News contributor. And Grover Norquist is president of Americans for Tax Reform. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Thank you, Shannon. Good to be with you. All right, Grover, I want to start with you. You have taken the heat very publicly because uh, you're accused by your critics of strong-arming Republicans into signing a <clears> pledge <throat> that means they won't raise taxes and that you're to blame for the gridlock we've had the last two years and that is going to continue. How do you respond? Well, as you know, the pledges taken by candidates for office to their constituents, to the people in their state and the American people, it's clearly a pledge they take to their constituents, and they get elected based on that. A majority of the congressmen in the U.S. House of Representatives have made a written commitment to their constituents. They'll vote against tax increases. And we didn't have gridlock. A year ago, 2011, we passed uh, the Budget Control Act, which cuts spending Two and a half trillion dollars from what Obama wanted to spend. Two and a half trillion didn't raise taxes. It was very successful. The people who whine are liberals who wanted to have higher taxes instead of the spending cuts. Well, and Doug, where do we go with this? Because oh. a lot of a lot of stuff that passes the House doesn't get anywhere in the Senate, sure. and, this, and vice versa is true. I mean, is there going to be any middle ground here? Well, I, I think Lindsey Graham suggested a way to do it, which is if you have real tax reform and lower rates, limit deductions, there's a way to get more revenue. And if you couple that with spending cuts and entitlement reform, you can have a pro-growth plan. Now, getting the precise numbers right and compromising is a real challenge but there's a way to do a deal and given what speaker boehner and the president have said i think there's a path i mean there were a number of debt reduction groups and commissions that were put together including one commissioned by the president and yet he didn't take their advice he didn't follow sure. what they had recommended so grover what makes mm -hmm. you think that uh, these uh, groups are going to be able to come around this time around and find some common ground well i'm not sure that they will the simpson bowls uh, commission, uh, which Simpson and Bowles wrote a plan uh, that called for taking s taxes from 18.5% of GDP up to 21%. That's a $5 trillion tax increase over 10 years uh, with spending cuts that were really uh, written in outline form. The challenge is that, as you say, the president uh, has not put any real spending cuts on the table. Worse, when he talks about his budget, he includes $800 billion dollars in uh, savings from not continuing the Iraq war for the next century, which no one was planning to do. And he counts between one and two trillion dollars in uh, spending cuts that have already been passed into law, the spending cuts from uh, the Budget Control Act. He now wants to count a second time. So he hasn't put real spending reduction and certainly no entitlement reforms on the table. Until he does, it's all a campaign. All right, Doug, I want to ask you about sure. the fact that the president did put together, you know, a budgetary framework. It got zero votes sure. uh, over on Capitol Hill. Zero. I mean, no Republicans, sure. no Democrats. So yeah. he's got a big task ahead of him. He's got this issue of leadership that Speaker Boehner keeps calling on him to rise to the occasion, rise to the moment, step up to that. Um, but the fact is, you know, there, there seems to be um, very little common ground. You mentioned entitlement reform, something no one used to talk about. Now politicians do talk about it, but they're afraid it's going to cost them their seat the next time that they're up. Because because uh, the other side will play games with it and, and call seniors and say that they're going to lose everything. Um, there doesn't really seem to be an actual 
appetite for attacking entitlement reform on both sides of the aisle. It's going to take both sides. Um, who do you think could be a leader or leaders on that particular issue? I, I think the answer are Bowles and Simpson. Grover doesn't like them and Grover doesn't want to raise mm -hmm. any revenue, but we have to be able to cut programs, raise some revenue, and you can do it by lowering rates and uh, reducing deductions. Now, we have to compromise in our system. Grover may win the argument, but America may lose the war if he's right. And bottom line, I'm one of those who believes that America can only succeed if we put our collective mm -hmm. heads together compromise and achieve a budgetary settlement that is not satisfactory to anybody but achieves our common goal of balancing a budget something bill clinton and newt gingrich did in the mid nineties grover are you against any kind of raising of revenue are you against closing loopholes do you count that as raising taxes well i'm certainly in favor of more revenue through economic growth if you grow the economy at four percent a year reagan rates as opposed to two percent a year french rates are now about what Obama's brought us up to. Uh, that, 4% a year instead of 2% a year, over a decade, raises $5 trillion in more revenue. Not a tax increase, but revenue through growth. We need to have pro-growth policies that bring in more revenue. Why would you raise taxes when you could get $5 trillion by cutting marginal tax rates, getting rid of some of the over-regulation that Obama's threatening the economy with, and having economic growth more people at work. That's the better way to raise revenue. And yeah, we need to reform entitlements, but it's disingenuous to say both parties have failed. The Republicans in the House passed the Ryan plan, which fundamentally reform entitlements. It simply needs a Senate and a president to go along with it. But the Republicans have passed a real budget in writing, in legislative form, not some essay in haiku about what they think might be done, which is all the president has done. All right. Well, you mentioned Paul Ryan. He did win his House seat. He'll be back there with the House Budget mm -hmm. Committee. So uh, we'll see if he gets any love from the Senate <laughs> and the President. It's a tall order. Gentlemen, thank you both for weighing in. Thank you so much, Shannon. Good to be with you.